London Heathrow. Host to 78 million passengers, nearly half a million flights, and one very unusual animal reception centre. Animals passing through Heathrow come here to be checked in. Hi! Oh, you're so pretty! Also known as the Ark, it's equipped to welcome almost any species through its doors. I like the cheeky one, holding his hand out for more food. <laughs> From reptiles and livestock to pets and predators, it's up to the Ark to make sure everyone is clear to enter the country. That really is the tiniest form I've ever seen. More than 200,000 animals passed through last year alone, and its dedicated team of over 40 staff are on hand every hour of every day. We'll just get a vet out just yeah, to be safe. And are always prepared to expect the unexpected. Ah! And then she lost her hand. Today on Animal Airport, a pair of special visitors. Oh, he's really cute. Thank you. There's confusion on the tarmac. So it looks like someone maybe has made a bit of an error. And five big huskies stretch the center to the limit. Those two are going in a big kennel. This one flight has taken up three quarters of our kennels. Since opening in 1977, Heathrow's Animal Reception Centre has been a world leader in the care of animals during transport, receiving 16,000 dogs and cats and 28 million fish through its doors every year. First in today is Supervisor Chris. So I've just come back from the airport from a South African flight that's come in with nine dogs on board, five of them huskies. Um, I've took one of the big vans out, um, but getting there, I realised that they were in big boxes. Um, did a bit of Tetris movement and managed to get them all on board. To make sure no unwanted diseases get into the UK, it's the Ark's job to make sure that every animal it receives has the right vaccinations and microchip IDs. If any animal doesn't have the correct paperwork, they have to be sent to quarantine for at least four months. Chris is checking the huskies. As you can see, big, big boxes. Not a job he can do on his own. Enter Apprentice Bradley. Hey Bradley, I was hoping with someone with muscles actually, but you'll do. These are Siberian huskies, and a fully grown adult can weigh up to 27 kilos. But Chris thinks Bradley is up to the challenge. Out on the airport, you've got um, all the loaders and ramp people to give you a hand. And here I've got Bradley, who's pretty much five of those guys. <laughs> These five huskies are being brought to the UK to live with their owner, Pierre. Brought him over from South Africa with me, so I haven't seen him for five months and I'm really looking forward to this. And he's keen to get them all back together so they can do what huskies do best. There are a couple of dry land sledding teams here that we would like to investigate and join up and maybe see what we can do in terms of um, just keeping the, the passion going. I mean, all five of them do enjoy the run. It's great exercise for them. It keeps them busy and out of mischief. That's it, Brad. Go for the small one. There we go. Last one. Huskies are a notoriously noisy breed, and after their long flight, this pack are making themselves heard. Huskies are very vocal. They're all okay. They are just uh, chatting to each other, letting them know that they're all good. But the center is filling up. So obviously we've only got a certain amount of kennels. So this one flight, the South African flight with nine animals, has pretty much taken up yeah, three quarters of our kennels. With space at a premium, Chris is hoping to get them processed as quickly as possible. Staff at the reception centre are getting ready to welcome a pair of very unusual guests. Once or twice a year we'll, we'll get a penguin arrival. It's not an everyday occurrence to see penguins. 
Bristol Zoo is sending 10 African penguins to Rome as part of a conservation project. But the plane only had room for eight. So a pair of penguins have been bumped onto tomorrow's flight and need to overnight at the Ark. Deputy Manager Ross has worked here for 15 years. So he gets called in to deal with anything out of the ordinary. I guess you could say I've done nearly every job at the Animal Protection Centre. Um, I started off as an animal attendant, uh, and then I moved up to a supervising animal attendant, and then I ended up in the position I am today as the um, deputy manager. The Heathrow Animal Reception Centre is, is a menagerie of all different animals, and you never know what to expect. The incoming penguins need his urgent attention. I've just found out they have been boxed up since yesterday morning, keeping them in there for 48 hours for, for what technically should be like a three-hour flight to Rome. You know, we're way beyond it. Ross needs to get his team to adapt one of the dog kennels to make it penguin friendly. You see this kennel here? Really give it a damn good hose out, right? Because this is where we're going to probably put them after. So make sure you get all the fan, give it a good spray up here, get all, get all the, get it all um, really clean, get fully disinfected for the penguin. Make sure the drains clear out the back as well, and then this is where we're going to put them after okay. when they arrive. Okay? All right. Super. Although well, no, people think penguins are aquatic, they, you know they live out of water all the time. So um, we'll put a small tray of water in there, primarily for them to drink in, really, and, and then we'll give them some kind of shelter so they can hide if they become scared. Getting a kennel ready for these aquatic birds is a first for animal health officer Shannon. Penguins being offloaded is a little bit random. Um, don't really see penguins being offloaded that often. Um, I've never had to set up an enclosure for them, but this will just be temporary, so we'll just meet their needs for the 24 hours that they're here. To make them as welcome as possible, Shannon needs to add some extra home comforts. We want to reduce all the risks for them to hurt themselves. Um, this floor can be quite slippy, it's not got a lot of grip, so. We'll put this black rubber down and I hope that it prevents them from slipping if they come in and out. I think everyone's excited to see the penguins. Um, it's a bit, yeah, something a bit different. Breaks the day up a little bit. There's just enough time for Ross to do some final checks to make sure everything's perfect. Quick picture, Bristol Zoo. Check they're happy with it. I can check they're happy. And uh, Bob's your uncle. Good plan, Batman. Elsewhere in the centre, Supervisor Chris is trying to find space for five large huskies. Oh, let's look where I'm going. And he's hoping that a good meal will calm the dogs down and make his job easier. Lots and lots and lots of mouths to feed. Hopefully hungry mouths, so it doesn't go all wasted. So, first one being let out. As he releases the dogs into the kennels, Chris tries to check that the microchips all match the paperwork. Ah, oh, drats. I was trying to grab the chip as he walked out of the box, but didn't happen, so we have to try again. Every dog that comes through the reception center must have a microchip. This will tell the staff if the animal has had all the required medical treatment, including a rabies vaccination. Without a microchip, Chris can't release the dogs into the UK and to owner Pierre. Bit worrying, no. Can't find it with this chip reader. I'll try another one. There's a few kinds of different manufacturers on chips. Um, we do have readers that can read all of them. Um, so if it's not one, we'll try, we'll try another one. Chris sends for backup in the shape of colleague Karen, armed with her very own personal chip reader. Hello. Oh, did you like your dinner? Hello, sweetie boy. Run your nose. They have such a dense coat that it is sometimes hard to find the actual original chip number. Mind? I've even brought my own chip reader in to try and it's not working. Hello, Thor. If Chris and Karen can't find the microchips, these dogs won't be going anywhere. We can't actually guarantee that the paperwork is actually matching that dog. So um, they will have to go into quarantine, looking at this, have another blood test, and then wait the three months again.
No one wants the dogs to be quarantined, so Chris and Karen must keep trying to find their chips. But if they don't find them, they can't risk letting an unvaccinated animal through. In the meantime, all Pierre can do is wait. Animal health officer Vicky is airside, en route to pick up another consignment of animals arriving at Heathrow. Just off to pick up 10 cats off the Canada flight um, that's just about to arrive. Chose the big van because we've got 10 cats. It's always best just to be cautious and take the biggest van we've got. The turnaround time for planes can be as little as 40 minutes. So working airside can be a highly pressurised environment, with all sorts of service teams eager to descend on the plane. Everyone's got a job to do, so obviously we want to collect our animals, but you've got people that have baggage to come off, and there's cargo that needs to come off, so everyone's got deadlines to meet as well, so it can be a bit chaotic at the beginning because everyone's just trying to get in there first. Do I risk the biscuit and go around the other side? Let me go and speak to this man. To try and beat the rush, Vicky's keen to speak to the ground crew about where her 10 cats might be offloaded. But there seems to be some confusion. He seems to think there's only one cat. He's got the manifest of what's on the flight. Um, he's not expecting 10 cats. If there's only one cat on this flight, then according to Vicky's paperwork, nine have gone missing in transit. She needs to get to the bottom of what's going on, and fast. Back at the loading bay, Deputy Manager Ross is taking delivery of a pair of Rome-bound penguins who've been bumped last minute from their flight. There's two in there. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. Nice one. Their room is all ready. Just the tricky job of getting them in there. Ross knows that with these snappy customers, he's going to need all his 15 years of experience. Their beaks, they have like spines that point inwards. I remember when I was a zookeeper, I suffered a horrific injury to a penguin. <laughs> so, like, obviously penguins, they're fish eaters, but in their, in their beak, they've got teeth that, that point backwards. So it just means so when a fish swims into their mouth, they pinch down and tries to pull back. Uh, same thing goes for your finger. Um, so obviously, if a finger goes anywhere near a penguin's mouth, our reaction instantly is to pull back. All you do when you pull back is those spines in the mouth, they just dig into your finger, and that, yeah, causes an injury. And there's another problem. If there's a front door, it may make my life a lot easier because you open the door, they walk straight out. Unfortunately, we're done. The crate only opens from the top, so Ross is going to have to lift out the penguins. Time for the gloves. See so if it bites you, try and pull your finger out. Well, you ready, Do you want me to just lift? Just lift up a little bit. One down, one to go. Um, just the other one now. But the second penguin is putting up more of a fight. Ow! Door shut See the spines of the teeth. See the spines. They obviously didn't like the fact that they had to be handled, but they seem quite chilled in there now. Yeah, more than happy. Yeah, they seem absolutely fine. Ross's experience has done the job, and the penguins can settle in for the night to wait for tomorrow's flight to Rome.
Heathrow's Animal Reception Centre is the first port of call for any creature that arrives at the UK's busiest airport. And Animal Health Officer Vicky is airside, trying to get to the bottom of the cat mystery. Let's see if we can track it. She's brought the big van to pick up 10 cats and ferry them back to the centre. <laughs> so it looks like someone maybe has made a bit of an error and put the weight of the animal, not how many there is. Oh yeah, it's one piece at 10 kilos. No missing cats then, just the one in her box, weighing in at 10 kilos. At least Vicky has enough room in her van. Definitely only one cat. Um, there's obviously been an error somewhere along the line and the weight's been put instead of the actual number of cats. So many animals pass through the ark every day. Nine fewer cats will bring a bit of relief. I think everyone will be happy that we don't have uh, 10 cats coming in. Be nice and straightforward. With 650 flights arriving daily at Heathrow, there's often a queue outside the centre to drop off new animals. Because of um, us being a quarantine, there's only one vehicle allowed in at a time. We've got two bays, so um, in the morning when all the flights are landing, it could be quite busy. Finally, it's Vicky's turn. It's Sadie the cat can be offloaded. Hello. Just a bit fluffy. It's all fluff, isn't it, Sadie? After such a long flight, Vicky's first priority is to give Sadie the chance to stretch her legs and have some food. If they have their own food, we'll always just give them that. Right then, Sadie. Hi. You really look very friendly. Would you like to come out? Sadie, come on. Come on then. Hi. Hello. Come on then, this way. Hi. She's very cute, she. Sadie will stay at the ark until her paperwork is checked to ensure it's safe to let her into the country. Mm mm. Earthy smells. There you go, Sadie. Enjoy. Over in the dog wing, there's a problem with the five huskies from South Africa. The staff are struggling to find their microchips to see if they've been properly vaccinated and can be released into the country. It's a tense wait for owner Pierre. It just adds a little bit of drama to the situation. But the ARC team don't give in easily. And their perseverance has paid off. Good girl, yes. They've managed to find all five microchips, and Supervisor Chris has got the news he's been waiting for. Five Huskies are all good to go, so I've just heard. Um, got clearance, paperwork's all fine, so I'm gonna grab a couple of people and uh, we'll, we'll get them out to their owners. How exciting is it? Yeah, it's a big relief that they were able to sort out their documentation. They're going to be noisy, they're going to be excited, I would imagine, so probably have to get a couple of people on it. You're muscly, I'm not. The dogs can sense the excitement too. I think they're going to go absolutely ballistic and howl. Pierre's hired a van to take the five dogs in their boxes the final 50 miles home. They're going to bring one dog, one box at a time, load the boxes, say hello to the dogs, load the dogs, and be on our way. Hey, Jess. It's been an agonizing wait, hello, but Pierre's finally hello. reunited hello, with his dogs. <laughs> hello. Just realized. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Go to your coach. Good girl. First one's out. Let's see who's next. Thank you. I'll just go grab the others for you. Hey, you. Hello. 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 Hello.
Hello. Hello, Lucky Sun. Hello. <laughs> Three so far. Just yeah. waiting for number four and five. <laughs> come on. All right, come. Up. But there's a last minute hitch. 34 inches is 36 inches. Too, too tall. Too tall. There's no room for the fifth and final box. So Huskies, Thor, and Heimdall have to buddy up. Now, these two usually play quite nicely together. The main chase and runner. Sometimes they swap who gets chased and who runs. <laughs> Great fun. Jigsaw puzzles. All in. All good. Looking forward to a nice trip home. The Huskies are at last on the final leg of their epic 5,000 mile journey. Happy days. Look at the state of us. We need a good wash, but yeah, it was good. It worked. In their makeshift room in one of the kennels, the penguins are the star attraction. Oh, he's really cute. Yeah, I can let you come up now. I think they might be out Thank here. you. And they've drawn quite a crowd. <laughs> Stop walking around. With the rest of the staff distracted, Deputy Manager Ross is left on dinner duty. They asked us to um, offer him some sprats, so that's what we've got here. Unusual food requests are nothing new for Ross. We get some funny looks on the local shops. You know, when we seize a big shipment of tortoises and we have to go by, down there and buy 50 lettuces. We don't know what animals are arriving in the animal reception centre. You know, we're not like a zoo that keeps penguins all the time, or, you know, uh, we don't have lions all the time, so we don't keep red meat for them all the time. So we do have to rely on local stores, local fishmongers, butchers, etc. And we, when we something arrives, we go out and we buy it. Shannon helps out with room service. Penguins can wait for their departure in comfort. Sadie the cat's paperwork all checked out and she was reunited with her owner. The Huskies made it safely to their new home. And the penguins had a comfortable night and were sent on their way to Rome to meet up with the rest of their group.